Hello and welcome to Living Waters and Script to Meets Life. The third designation of the threefold office of the Messiah as we find in the Old Testament is that of Israel's king who would rule forever. Prophet Zechariah writes, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a donkey. In, in 2 Samuel 7.16 we read God's promise to King David, Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Coming to the New Testament, we find in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 49, Nathanael saying to Jesus, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Matthew in his Gospel, chapter 1, gives the genealogy of Jesus, presenting him to be the legal heir of the throne of David. In the second chapter of Matthew's Gospel, we find the Magi looking for Jesus asking, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? And in the final chapter, Matthew records Jesus declaring to his disciples, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. We also see that the overarching theme of the book of Revelation is that Jesus is the true king on the throne and not Caesar. He is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Our savior, our redeemer is also the, the sovereign ruler of the world. So often we experience seeming defeat in our battle against the world, in our battle against our own flesh and the devil. The fight often seems too tough. But the good news is that these defeats are only temporary. For Christ has ascended to the right hand of God the Father and has been given the name above all names. He is the omnipotent ruler of his people and he cannot fail to bring us the final victory. That is why Paul is able to boldly declare that in all things we are more than conquerors. Because for us who are in Christ, the Father works in all things for our good. In Martin Luther's hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God, the great reformer penned these memorable words. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. One little word. One little word is all that stands between Satan and his complete destruction. Very soon, all his enemies, all of Christ's enemies will be made his footstool and he will rule over his people in an actual political, political sense of the word ruling. All wrongs will be made right and the world will be ruled by the just and righteous king. Until then, he should reign fully in our hearts and the, and the task of the church, as Calvin puts it beautifully, is to make this invisible reign of Christ in our hearts be made visible to the world outside. Is Christ our true King?